Hey friends, continuing on from yesterday, I am talking about Warlock today, Warlock Season 20 PvP builds, and it is not prepared for that whatsoever. I need to transfer my weapons. Slot 0 PvP weapons Warlock, and it's going to throw all of them for my Titan, most of them for my Titan, onto my Warlock. If you notice, I have Iron Banner gear on because it was Iron Banner this week, and I want as much multiplier as possible. So let's start off with talking about the Conditional Finality Shotgun. This has unique interactions on both my Warlock and my Hunter. The unique interaction on my Warlock is that whenever I play Shadebinder, it procs Ice Flare Bolts for getting all the pellets landed on, on the Stasis Shot. And it also procs a Whisper of Hedrons, which gives me more of everything. Stability, Aim Assist, Airborne Effectiveness, Mobility, Resilience, Recovery, does my taxes. Anyhow, let's uh, start from the top. This uses unflinching harmonic aim, which is solar, since I'm playing a solar subclass on Dawnblade. Kinetic targeting, harmonic targeting, harmonic siphon. So, pretty standard transversive step setup. You might be wondering why I'm on a speed boot craze right now. That is because I find it a lot easier to aim on controller when I use speed boots. And they still feel good on mouse and keyboard. I don't feel tied to them on mouse and keyboard, but I do on controller. Uh, the idea is if my slide is longer, that means I can use aim acceleration sooner so that I ultimately end up with the crosshair exactly where I want it to be. I think over the course of a match as well, the extra movement speed and slide lets me live more often which means I'm living to get these ability cooldowns in the first place. Uh, back in the day, I would run like I Have Another World and go wild with the ability cooldowns, try to get them as fast as possible. But I think if like we took an experiment of 100 matches with I Have Another World and 100 matches with T-Steps, they would be pretty similar. So why not just use T-Steps? That's my thoughts at least. If it works on controller, I might as well just play it on both. My not T-Step loadouts... Our Reign of Fire, Boots of the Assembler. Yeah, that's pretty much it. That's for Gambit. We're going to start at the top, though, because I think Dawnblade is a meta force. By the way, I made a Season 20 meta breakdown video, if you do want to watch that, in a Titan video yesterday. So I always go Icarus Dash and Heat Rises. I'm on Healing Nade this season because Fire Bolts are a little too powerful, and I want to get a sense of how this class works at base, and I'll switch to Fire Bolts if I need to in a sweaty enough match. Healing Nade's still really good though, even for Heat Rises. It does heal you when you consume it. So yeah, I want to be building into using Heat Rises as often as possible. I have Ember Mashes for more Scorch. Searing, defeating a Scorch target gets melee energy, which Heat Rises already innately does just for jumping in the air and getting a kill. If I get a melee tag, I am Radiant, as well as my allies. If I revive, I get Restoration. And picking up a Fire Sprite grants respiration, uh, Restoration. If I defeat a Scorched target, it also creates a Fire Sprite. So that's just synergistic with the grenade energy. So here's how I Scorch with a Healing Grenade. I consume it, then it makes my Phoenix Dive Scorch. So if I start with an Incinerator Snap, and then Phoenix Dive immediately afterward onto the opponent, they will ignite and blow up. It's amazing. I don't use Incinerator Snap because it's good. I use it because it's able to be canceled. You can slide, hit your super button on mouse and keyboard, cancel the slide, and do a lot of cool stuff, a lot of cool movement. So until that's fixed, I'm just always running Incinerator Snap. As far as the supers go, I can really run either with Tier 7 Intellect, I don't think I build into Dynamo on my Warlock, even though I am using Phoenix Dive close more often than not. I still probably will die before I reach the floor anyway, so Dynamo just doesn't really make much sense on Warlock. I'd rather have a higher innate intellect and use a tier 5 super. So the whole point of having this unflinching solar aim is again the Antaeus Ward counter, since Conditional Finality does pierce through that, but 
also so that I can do this in sixes. I can just float with Polaris Lance, be a threat in the sky, get a couple easy kills, and make my teammates' job a lot easier by me being an anchor and making my opponents have to look up, which means they're not looking at my uh, teammates as much. So let's check the other loadout. This is a kinetic unflinching version. I've been really enjoying Ace of Spades on my Warlock. Feels so nice with T-Steps where I crouch, get that enhanced movement speed. I'm still aimed down sights with Ace of Spades and have my radar. So I can kind of uh, manipulate my position within the pie of the radar and make my opponent slide out with the shotgun when I am not in shotgun distance or the opposite. I'm on the inner part of the pie and they um, just let me slide into them in shotgun because they don't expect me to be so close so soon. I also have Thorn. I also have Lumina. You will see why Lumina in a second. No time to explain is my other kinetic. And then I have my snipes for special situations. And then Jade Rabbit if I don't have time to uh, switch to the correct harmonic. Maybe I go Jade Rabbit and Drang instead of Polaris and Allied Demand. The point is, both are equally good, but I want one to not get rid of my special ammo at a given time. Yeah, there's a Glaive in there. You'll see why in a little bit. This is my favorite controller loadout, even though it is not a slide boot. Vex Mytho class is a force to be reckoned with. Reign of Fire says any fusion rifle, final blow up will make me radiant. Vex Mytho class is a fusion rifle. If I activate my class ability with Reaper, then get a weapon kill, it drops an orb of power. If I pick up that orb, I get my health back with recuperation and better already, as well as, is it a 3% damage bonus with one kinetic surge? Then a 4.4 and a 5.5 if I had all three. That matters on the Silicon Aroma with Frenzy. So picture this. I'm playing sixes. My controller is aiming for me with Vex Mytho class within 30 meters. I'm building up the Vex Mytho class perk. I'm getting Radiant. And 12 seconds later, Frenzy pops up. I still have Radiant. I pick up an Orb of Light. I have my Surge. Now I can fly around body shotting people with this sniper rifle. So this is an alternate uh, version of my Lumina Railgun, which you can see right here. Triple Arc Weapon Surge. Why might I want that? Well, that's because, and this is all different fragments, by the way. Ashes, Benevolence, Torches, Mercy. I did not have the luxury of, like my Titan, keeping it flush across all the different builds. This is different every time. I use Incendiary Nade and Incinerator Snap to ignite, since I cannot run Phoenix Dive with Boots of the Assembler. So the idea here is I use Lumina. By standing in a rift, it gives me Noble Rounds for free. Shoot Noble Round at teammate. We get a 15% damage bonus, which with this sniper rifle can body shot most resiliences. I say most, it's not 10. If I'm on the final bullet and have surges, maybe. I have an alternate version of that where I run it with arc for fun sometimes, and that's why there was a glaive in here. Sometimes I will use this glaive instead of the Macabre, and sometimes I will load up and switch my Gambit slot for Boots of the Assembler Arc Scalpel, where I use the Arc Buddies to clean up the glaive, but if I also get the glaive kill, that's cool too, and if I get the Lumina kill, that's also cool too, because the glaive has harmony, and when you combo it with all the Surges and the Lumina buff, the glaive starts one-hitting people. So it's the same idea. This one I just think is a lot, it, it makes more sense and it's better for my team to go railgun. So I wanna keep this one on tap and then switch the arc one whenever I'm not playing Gambit. The arc one's just so fun. Okay, let's go back to Reign of Fire though. Look at the fragments. Scorch, extension of Radiant. Melee makes me Radiant. Okay, so here's what it is. It's 
Radiant Restoration have a longer duration in the first place, but then getting a Solar Weapon kill extends it even further. So I can throw a Healing Nade at my feet and start getting kills with X Mythoclast, and it's kind of like a bad Devourer. We got Devourer at home. One thing I want to mention since I'm on Warlock now is I shoot for 8 Resilience in all my characters because it counters the target lock. Uh, no, 8 counters the aggressive frame. 7 counters the target lock of the aggressive frame. Makes them have to shoot an extra bullet into me. That's valuable. I don't worry about strength whatsoever because I can simply just get an in air kill to recharge all my strength or kill a scorched target with the uh, other fragments I run on solar. Okay, you probably know what this one is. Don't make fun of me, I have not farmed my malicious birthright yet. This is Double Grenade Launcher. Another content creator, Epic Defender, has made a full breakdown on his version of this build, and I think it's superior. So go check that video out. I will explain why I made the cuts I made though. So starting off, siphons for both my weapons, Font of Wisdom so I can get a little bit of intellect anytime I armor charge. I didn't know what else to put there. So. I could also switch these intellect mods out for resilience at any time if I feel I need it. So if I think I'm dying more to special scenarios, I'll switch it out. I have Void Loader and Heavy Handed. There's a good chance that I switch to Celestial Fire here just to act as a third grenade launcher shot in a pinch. My unflinchings, better already, absolution. If I have to put a surge to get like a uh, proximity launcher to one tap, I will in the future. I just have to experiment with different builds. What I ultimately want is an ignition code with slide shot and frenzy, but I will settle for a slideways malicious birthright with frenzy too. And I think I'm going to go spike nades. I've been enjoying Spike Nades so much more than Proxy, but if the Surges and if Frenzy makes Proxy extremely consistent for a one tap, I'm going to switch to that. I guess I had Artifice uh, room to spare on this build. I'll show you my Gambit build at the end. Okay, this is where it starts heating up. This is possibly one of the most min-max builds in Destiny 2. So this has the one-eyed mass fragment on Voidwalker. Dilation for enhanced radar. That's what I really want when I crouch. And I'm crouching anyway with T-steps. Yes, they both give faster uh, sneak speed. But I don't think they stack. All I want is the radar though. Leeching so I get my health back whenever I melee and this does come up in games a lot and Then pick up orb get devour you might be wondering like well, why would I do that? I can already get devour by just getting an ability kill But the thing is ability kills aren't as frequent as you think so being able to just throw a rift Reaper get a weapon kill and then pick up an orb that could be from my teammate and then use that devour to win a potential 1v3 it comes up way more than you think. So the combination of One-Eyed Mass Fragment plus Devour plus Devour, you're going to be winning a lot of 1vx situations. So I don't really know what to run for the Dexterity. This is mostly a placeholder. I switched everything to Solar once again to counter Antaeus coming out in the future and just keep this flush between my three characters. Also, Drang, very, very good on controller. And Borrowed Time, surprisingly, really good on Warlock. Even with T-Steps, I melee a lot. If I ever run Borrowed Time, you always run a single Solar Weapon Surge to tip it to the next time to kill. Okay, remember when I said min-max build? This is good for next season. I'm anticipating that aggressive SMGs are getting nerfed, right? So six resilience, we know that makes, I believe, precision or aggressive frames, one of them, have to have extra pellets 
So six was good in the past. If I go thorn with retold tail, or it doesn't really matter. It could be any element. Let's just do a thousand yard stare. Instead of doing harmonic targeting, we're going to use the seasonal mod for void targeting. And now you see I have an extra slot right here. This switches to resilience. Now, a mortal target lock has to shoot another bullet, which matters because vigilance, starvation, devour, devour, reaper getting my health back. If I live to fight another day, that's bad news for my opponents. Because if I pick up that orb, triple kinetic surge on thorn or ace of spades. Now, before anybody's mad at me for talking about Thorn, if you see a Thorn user, throw on Terraba. Thorn builds Terraba up really quickly. When I see Terraba on the enemy team, I immediately switch to Ace. It's part of the reason it's in my inventory. Uh, let's show all the mods here. Again, some of these are placeholder. Heavy-handed, kind of an interesting one. I don't always get the kill with my melee, but if I do, it's going to proc Devour, and then I can leave the orb on the floor for a future health pack. A future, like, strafe over the health pack in the gunfight. So, although heavy-handed may not be my first choice, it's just a placeholder for if I go any of the dexterity perks. As far as the stat splits go, I want moderate intellect, Moderate Discipline and Moderate Strength. I value almost all three of these equally. It's just my armor is really high discipline across the board. Okay, finally down to the most complicated build. Let's go with the Solar version. I started on this one. Conditional Finality procs the Fragments. I like Cold Snap recently since the buff. Although I'm not using Osiomancy Gloves, they're still really good and I still think consistent. But if I wanted to, I would go Dustfield. If I really had to against Barricade Titans. So I have Chains, so if someone's frozen, I take less damage. Hedrons to boost all the stats. Conduction for stats. And Bonds. Defeating frozen targets grants you super energy. This is the most pivotal decision on Shadebinder right now. On my helmet, I have double dynamo. On my class item, I have double distribution and reaper so let me paint the picture for you shotgunner tries to slide up in, into my grill i throw rift they get frozen i can choose to do two things now i can choose to melee them to activate swashbuckler on borrowed time or i can get the kill with my shotgun or whatever instant kill and now proc an orb for reaper if i'm using borrowed time i usually do have a solar weapon surge and then I get all my health back from uh, recuperation. I get super energy from Dynamo. If they died while frozen. Super energy for bonds. Super energy for distribution. I am not playing with y'all. I have the first super in the match as a shade binder. In trials, sometimes in round 3 or round 4, I have a super and the enemy team's wondering what the hell's going on. The answer is, whenever you're in a 1v3... Try to play it slow so that you can enter the next round with abilities charged. That way you can try to finesse getting more freezes. And it's just better for your ability economy overall. This is the best super in the game too, so. I think it also makes big orbs, since it's a roamer. This is not my preferred way to play Shadebinder. This is what the meta calls for right now. This is my preferred way to play Shadebinder. We have Turret Coon. Still have Frost Pulse, the uh, Rift. Freeze Rift. Got a Glacier Nade for platforming and to turn into a turret. Chains. Torment for more nade energy. Durance so my turret slows more. And then Shards so that if I use my Glacier as like a makeshift Titan Barricade, which is more my style, I can get the entire recharge back faster. So I'm probably never getting a super with this in Trials, but if you know some really dirty turret spots, which I do have my crowd pleaser here for grenade lineups, 
you can win rounds. I don't do it all the time because I want my opponents to rematch me, but it's there. Still have a... Uh, I did not mention this Reed's Regret for the Vex Mythoclast build. This one's really good. You can proc a dodge you off the kill, and you don't even need Radiant to be able to body shot kill. So if I want to get a faster charge rate, I can go with Enhanced Battery. Then, on the Lumina build. Since it has Liquid Coils, Lumina can make this body shot certain resiliences before Adagio. I think that covers the armor stuff. Oh, I still have Dynamo in that one. Let's see what I went with. Impact Induction and Focusing Strike since it's really hard to get a grenade kill and really hard to get a melee ability kill on Shadebinder. That makes sense. And then Bomber to get the turret back even faster. Let's talk about any special weapons here. Standard Eye of Soul. Frenzy Snipe. Placeholder Grenade Launcher. My Quick Draw Snapshot Igneous Hammer. Controller Drang. Placeholder Retold Tail. I want to go for another one of these with Quick Draw. But I humored this roll with no distractions, and it is really good. I still want the handling, though. When Halloween rolls around, I'm probably going to farm every variant of Macabre possible because I love that snipe. Machine Gun, Eager Edge, Remote Debt, Outrageous Fortune from Dares, Skulking Wolf, Machine Gun, Iron Banner, Unobtainable Info Stick, Salvation's Grip for stupid stasis stuff. Black Talon because it's the best pull in threes. And Wardcliff Coil because it's an MK monster. I think that covers this build crafting section. If you care about Gambits, typically I will throw a Izanagi's Burden. Let's see. And a Without Remorse Shotgun with Incandescent. So you've probably seen this on any other uh, YouTube recommended video talking about some racers, but essentially I use a melee, throw a grenade, and they both give each other more grenade and more melee. So you start throwing sun bracer nades before the ad spawning gambit, and everything's already dead. So since I am so efficient with ad clear, I put all the mods into getting as much special ammo as possible. So I can use Izanagi's Burden to invade if nobody invades, or to kill the invader. Then I just use Eager Edge to move around the map. Pretty simple. I also use Dawn Blade sometimes, like the Daybreak Super, just to clean up um, blockers. Pretty standard strategy, and I will live comment at some point. But this has been a standard Gambit loadout for years at this point. It's just especially good with the new Fragments and... Stuff like that. Okay, let's talk Broodweaver. I do have a Broodweaver build that pivots from this Harmonic. And then I change a mod. And then it has very similar stat splits. This is the setup I went for. I went for the Threadling Bomb setup. Where you consume the nade, wait for it to be almost charged. Then you approach your opponent and throw down your Rift. And then it throws out all of the threadlings at once and then if i use like round robin my final blows create a threadling which is really nice however with all that being said it's working way too hard when i could just be playing shade binder hope you enjoyed this one friends i will see you in the next one